So for our next jerry can, we're just going to introduce a new process of weathering. Um, as you can see here, this one has been done in bunker gelb. Um, what we're going to do now is chipping. Now there are various ways of doing uh, the chipping method. Um, you can use salt. I've never tried it before, it doesn't appeal. Um, masking fluid, uh, which I've done um, and we'll look at on another can. Uh, hairspray method, which is the uh, main one that I use and we'll look at quite a few cans using that process. Um, but for this one I thought we'd um, use the sponge method. Um, quite a common way of doing things uh, with the chipping. Here I just have a, a, an old piece of foam and as you can see I'll just take out chunks of foam. There we go. And then with a set of tweezers um, just pull it all out uh, to make the edges all rough. Now as far as the colour of your chips, well that's entirely up to you. Um, the usual common one is uh, German camo black brown. Um, you could, if you want a rusty look you can go for a bit of rust. Um, if you want to go down to the bare metal, uh, Vallejo do, do quite a lot of um, metallic colours. Burnt iron's my usual favourite one. Um, or you can go for some sort of brown oxide. So it's entirely up to you. So on this particular one, uh, we're going to go for the German black brown, camo black brown. So picking up the foam, um, you can either use tweezers um, or in this case just, just use your fingers. Um, take some of the paint, try and remove as much of it as you can. And then very lightly or very heavily, um, it really does depend on, on the actual look that you're after. I'm just going to go for some, for some light chips. Obviously most of your chipping will occur around the edges but if you have a look on uh, Google and I strongly recommend you do because uh, the easiest way to create a authentic looking jerry can is to base it on the look of an old one old pictures and there's plenty of them out there so here we're just doing some light chipping all around the edges where the most use is going to come from obviously around the handle area and on the raised edges so let's bring that in closer starting to get that sort of worn out outlook so that's just general little chips um, and then very carefully if you actually drag the sponge down predominantly around the bottom or off the top edges you can start to get um, a different form of chipping there we go more scratches along the bottom and then if you're going for the extreme look um, get yourself a very small artist brush into the paint and then those areas that you couldn't quite get to just do random patterns just let the brush dance over the surface and this way you can complement the chipping that you've done with your sponge I always used to do my chips this way but as you can see it's quite a time consuming process and that's why I've now gone over to um, chipping with hairspray but still very effective 
and you can control how your chips come out rather than going for, for the random systems of masks and for the hairspray method. So there we go. I'll spend a little bit more time on that and we'll get a nice chipped effect on this particular fuel can. Now for the next fuel can we're going to tackle uh, the chipping method uh, using the hairspray technique. Um, quite straightforward, um, using a re regular type of uh, hairspray, this is the one I use at the moment, um, but I have no preference, it's whatever is cheapest at the time when I'm going shopping in the drugstore. And all you need to simply do is just do um, a couple of passes. Um, with the spray at arm's length um, all over. Let that dry for a few minutes or use your hair dryer and then do exactly the same and just get a nice covering and nice patination of hairspray across the actual uh, piece. Now for this particular one uh, we're going to be um, going back to the dark blue grey. Uh, now this is model colour which doesn't um, airbrush very well so, so that will be diluted down. Um, me personally, uh, anything with Vallejo, um, when I'm doing hairspray chipping, um, I like to leave it uh, dry for an hour before I start the chipping process. Also, to get better chips, um, apply the uh, colour um, in thin coats, one or two, just so that you can cover the um, undercoat. Um, and this will make your chipping process a lot easier. So, after an hour's worth of drying, um, it's now time to start the chipping process. So using um, just clear normal water. Um, this is my favourite um, chipping brush, which is just an old Airfix one with the bristles cut down. Um, the way I like to do it is I'll coat the area first in water. And then we'll start to do the chipping. Hopefully you can see this okay. And there we are starting to come off already. Just concentrate around the edges. The wear and tear. Very careful. So we don't want large chips to come off. We just want very small subtle as the saying goes less is more and that's all coming off very well indeed so we'll keep going around take a few minutes to do so Leave it with me and I'll come back to you in a moment. So the chipping is all complete. Uh, very pleased with the way that one's come out. Um, if you're happy with the look, you can leave it as is. Um, or you may wish to do some additional weathering and work to it. But hopefully you can see the benefit of using the hairspray method. And that's produced a lovely whirl worn jerry can so let's move on to the next one and see what sort of chipping effects we can create okay so the next jerry can uh, we're going to do we're going to paint in sand yellow uh, moving away from the uh, factory colours that we spoke about earlier in this video and just starting to um, improve the tones and the different types of shades that you can get um, from using different colours. So, let's get the airbrush on. Very easily done making sure that we still keep that pre-shading
There we go, happy with that. So once that's dry, um, on this particular jerry can, we're going to go for extreme chipping using the sponge. Um, it's very difficult to do, but we'll see what effect um, we can come up with. Uh, we'll go for the um, primer as the main chip. Um, maybe a bit of cam brown chipping in there as well, just, just to mix it up a little bit. And with this one, we'll, we'll also start to introduce the concept of using uh, pigments to create dust effects on this one as well. So, with the base coat of sand yellow now dry, what we're going to do, we're going to add our first layer of chipping. And here we're going to be using Iraqi sand. And on this build, we're just going to be using the process of uh, sponge chipping, uh, along with some brush chipping as well. So again, just dab in, taking off the excess. And we can be quite heavy with this chipping because what we want to do is to create the impression of different layered and toned paint. That's going on very nicely indeed. No need to concentrate on the edges here. I want this to be all over because we are going for an extreme chipped look on this particular can. Again, remember at the very beginning I'm giving you ideas and looks for you to choose which you feel would be best to suit your particular build. Apparently variety is the spice of life. So let's get that all over there. That's coming on really well. It's been a long time since I've done sponge chipping. And as before, just do some little streaks here and there. Let's get that heavily weathered on that side. There we go. Mustn't forget the handles at the top. And there we go. Let's put that up against the blue card. There we are. And get that in focus. So there we go. We have our first layer of chipping. And what I'll do, I'll now get a brush and I'll add some more chips to that, mainly around where the grooves are, etc. And then once that's dry, we can work on our next layer of chipping. So with the first layer now dry, we will now turn our attention to the next layer, which will be the dark chipping. And we'll be using our ever faithful German camo black brown. So again, take off as much as you can. And this time not so severe. And just to enhance what's already on the You can see that a bit better now. Okay, leave that with me and I'll continue and finish that off. So there we are. One heavily distressed jerry can. And what I'll now do is put um, a coat of uh, matte varnish this time. And then we can start work on the oils when that's dry. So next we're going to do a pin wash um, so you're using some thinner uh, this is uh, burnt umber we just get a nice thin consistency and we'll just go all the way around and let that seep in 
very easy and straightforward. And again, if you get any overspill, just get yourself a nice um, brush. Now in this particular case, you don't really have to uh, remove the overspill. Um, you can just blend it in um, and that, that, that will give quite an effective look of dirt as well. You don't have to use burnt umber, you can use raw sienna. Anything that you feel will look correct on your particular jerry can. So leave that with me and I'll show you the final effects. Now for the next jerry can um, we're going to use the uh, masking fluid chipping method. Um, later in the um, war um, the Germans um, not so much ran out of paint but um, were certainly struggling to produce it and um, you'll find many instances of equipment and armour uh, going out from the factory straight onto the uh, battlefield um, just in its uh, primer coat. Um, there are examples uh, on the internet of um, red oxide uh, jerry cans um, so we're going to reproduce that look here now obviously this is an early jerry can so if you want to be completely realistic make sure you use um, a kit uh, jerry can which is the uh, later war style um, but for this one um, what we'll do as you can see I've given it a, a colour of um, burnt iron by Vallejo and what we'll now do um, using the uh, sponge method um, as we uh, as I highlighted earlier um, using uh, liquid mask and then once that's dried what we'll do is we'll, we'll coat it in um, the red primer and um, we'll see what effect we're able to get from there so I place a little bit of the shipping fluid, um, again same way applied to the sponge, take off any excess. Um, I don't want this too heavy, um, so we just do little areas. There we go, that's better. You can see that going on there. And again, as before, with the other sponge chipping, uh, we'll get a brush. And we'll just apply some small areas. And this will give you a, an opportunity to see what effect this creates on your can. Because uh, you may like it and you may wish to use it on your own models. Okay, so that's all done. We'll leave that to dry fully, and then once dry, that will be given a, a coat of uh, red primer. So with the masking fluid dry, um, I coated the jerry can in hull red, um, a little bit darker than the red oxide would be, um, but. Uh, there's still some more work to be done so we'll be able to add some tones to that and as you can see you can see the bumps and lumps there which is the masking fluid underneath that coat so what we'll do now is just a simple matter of rubbing it off and we'll have a look and see what sort of effects we've got coming up very simple process There we go. Obviously I'll tidy it up a, bit, a little bit more, but that gives you an idea of the effect that can be created just by using the chipping fluid. Now the can's been given a couple of coats of matte varnish in preparation for the oil work. Um, now that's fully dry, um, it's very much a very simple process of adding on a black 
filter um, so using the oil board um, using just matte black thinned right down we'll just apply a coat across here very simple just to tone it all down a bit and blend in all of the burnt iron chips that have come through it's a bit too heavy so let's take some of that off there we go that's better and that's drawing everything together don't forget the tops and the bottoms just a little bit of extra black in there because as you can tell that's more of the shaded areas underneath so there we go so that's the black filter applied just put a card behind there we go and we'll leave that for a couple of minutes just to dry off and then we can start on the rest of the oil work I decided to make this one into uh, an oil can um, just to show what you can do by darkening and using oils etc um, so the first stage is going to be to do a pin wash and what I'm going to use here is uh, black now black is probably the worst color for control uh, as far as oils go because if you get any spillage at all and try to clean it off it gets everywhere so be extra careful when doing this so we'll start in the middle And there we go, just let it drift out. And avoid touching the jerry can as much as you can. And this is quite a precise procedure, so leave it with me and I'll come back with the final look. So with the um, pin wash now dry, we're gonna look at uh, pigments. Um, as you can see, I have quite a vast array of pigments, different makes. Um, you saw earlier that they used the pastels as well, so uh, you can get lots of different tones and colours, etc. Um, what I like to then do is sort of put three or four into a little pot, different shades. So uh, that's my dark pot. Then we have one with medium colour. And then we have the light colour all together. And what we'll, we'll now do is start applying that to the actual jerry can itself. Now for our oil can, um, we're going to have a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, we're going to go with a black pigment from Vallejo. And what we'll do, again, in the same way as before, is that we'll put a little bit out on the tissue paper. Now, again, with oils, anything black just gets everywhere. So be very careful when applying this. And the leap of faith is that you're just going to coat the whole thing in the black oxide. Don't scrub it, just dab it on, on the top as well. Like so. I'll just get that out of the way. And then what we're going to do, we're going to return to our oils. And we get our thinner. And again, we'll get a nice wash of black. Just move that in there so you can see. And then what you want to do... Just have that held like so and then just using the back of your blade just go around splattering all the black oil over the can as you can see it's quite a mucky process so make sure your bench area is all clear just try and get that into focus for you so that's the heavier more neat application 
and then if you just add a little bit more thinner as you can see it's a lot more watery now and that will give you a different style of splatter obviously don't forget the top and again around the face and the sides let's see how well that's come out got some nice deposits there and really all now is just a matter of leaving that to dry and then we'll come back and add some more or move on to the next stage depending on the look that you're after.